So, who are we talking about today? If you couldn't guess from the music, Bites of Rye. Bites of Rye he has a YouTube channel run by a bloke called Ryan, who does up motorcycles, gives them away to his patrons. He's quite clear that he knows nothing about what he's doing, but um, not clear enough, I don't think. Uh, he was when he started, and anyway, he now seems to think he knows what he's doing. That's good, isn't it? Anyway, um, his most recent bike is a Honda Super Dream from 1981, 1982, sometime around there. Um, when he got the Super Dream, this was, I said it was basically the bike he should have started with. Um, yeah, definitely the bike he should have started with. It's mild, it's pretty much unbreakable, very simple. Oh, excuse me. Um, it's not a black hood. It's not a thunder race. So yeah, it's a good it's a good bike to get your get your teeth into as a first restoration. Um, shame it's not his first really. Anyway, uh, it was not running or not. Hadn't been run, that's the thing. It hadn't been run for a good long, good, a good long time. Although it actually did run um, off starter fluid quite happily. So, you know, hey, there's nothing particularly wrong with it. Um, very shabby, a bit rusty. Needed quite a few pieces replacing. Brakes are fucked. You know, the usual. Um, so Ryan has, has done it up and he's got it running. Um, now, since he's got it running, everybody has said to him that it sounds like a bag of spanners. Everybody, uh, yeah, everybody who's not sucking his cock has said it sounds like a bag of spanners. And there's a very good reason for this. The reason is, it sounds like a bag of spanners. Um, it sounds very, very wrong indeed. I've had a couple of super dreams. Um, about the only thing you can really hear, there's a bit of rattle. Nothing much, but uh, but the most the most intrusive noise that comes from Super Dream is the gear wine. Um, they were lovely little bikes, actually. I am um, a bit an aside. Um, they get very bad press. Um, in wet dream, dream on, all that stuff. Um, they were beginners bikes, especially the 250. The 250 was a beginners bike that you could ride on L plates back in the day. Until 1987 or 1983, can't remember. Um, yeah, the bike you could ride on old plates. Um, it was meant for beginners or commuters on the 400. They were solid, didn't handle terribly well, but didn't handle, handle terribly horribly either. You know, twin shocks on the back, you know, very basic, basic. Basic Japanese motorcycle um, disc brake up, fr up front, which was something that was relatively new for a lot of bikes, um, and they were reliable. And this was at a time when Japanese bikes were not considered to be reliable, or they were just beginning to be considered reliable, um, and they were no longer a, a laughing stock compared to the British bikes at the time and the American bikes at the time. And the British bikes at the time are no longer produced because they were shit. And the American bikes of the time are still produced today and are still shit. But the Japanese motorcycles at the time were becoming very, very good. The first ones were laughably awful. They were laughable clones of some of the British bikes. Um, and But by the time the Super Dream came around, they were really, really good. Um, they were good. They were solid. They were... Yeah, they were reliable bikes. Um, the Super Dream wasn't going to um, set anybody's house on fire. But, you know, uh, it's not. It's not a wonderful machine to ride, but they're a very good beginner's bike. They're still a very good beginner's bike. Um, you know, somebody who's just passed their test at two fifty Super Dream's fantastic. You're not going to get into too much trouble with it. You learn how to ride properly. You learn how to r ride within the limitations of the machine. 
Um, if you wanted something more sporty at the time, you'd go for a 4 4, a 404, 554, 750, 900. Um, they were quite raw. Uh, 554 that I had was great. Huge fun that was. Um, it, was uh, it was a lot more powerful than the, um, the Super Dream was and uh, handled a lot better. And mine was a shed. Mind you, so was my Super Dreams. So were my Super Dreams. 250 and the 400. Anyway. Back to Ryan's bike. Um, I know what they, I know what Super Dreams sound like. Ryan's doesn't sound like that. Um, and a lot of people have been telling him this. Um, I am one of them. From the first time he fired it up, after he put it back together, until now, it's been no. That just sounds wrong. Um, I think he's got his timing out by a tooth on the chain. It's, it really is that simple. And it shouldn't be rattling. Like they shouldn't be making that kind of noise. But there's a whole load of other stuff that he's done wrong with this machine as well. And, you know, I can get by with, uh, you know, the fact that he's you know, mechanically inept. It was almost funny watching somebody butcher a centre stand using an angle grinder for the first time in his life. And rather than using a cut-off disc, using a grinding disc to cut something off. It was shocking, but um, but on the other hand, it was quite amusing. Um, that's why the bike doesn't have a centre stand anymore, funnily enough. Um, where were we? Oh yes, the noise. Um, so yeah, there's there's a few things that he's done wrong with it. Um, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think he's done the valves. Um, that would have been a good idea. Um, he may have put the cam chain tensioner in wrong. Possibly. A lot of people are shouting about the cam chain tensioner. They had a history of a little bit of cam chain, cam chain rattle because um, the tensioner designed a bit shite. But uh, I don't think that's what his has got. It's much more much more aggressive than cam chain rattle on a, on a Super Dream. Um, but the other thing is that his bike sat for ages with the barrels off. Um, it sat for ages with the barrels off because somebody broke one of the barrel studs um, through ineptitude, which is fair enough, you know, if he knew what he was doing, he, would have, he wouldn't have snapped it. Um, it would have loosened things off gently and gone, gone round all the way round. But anyway, he snapped one off, and that's no big deal. Um, couldn't get it out, still no big deal. You know, a stretched bolt that's jammed into a, jammed into a hole is an absolute fucker to get out, and eventually he sent it off to get it machined out. And I think probably re really heli coiled. Um, so that happened. It took months. It's had welding on the stud with the barrels off. It's had grinding on the stud with the barrels off. It's had re welding on the stud with the barrels off. And then it's had machining. And as far as I'm aware, Ryan has not taken the bottom end of the engine apart. So all of the crap from sitting around for ages with the barrels off. Grinding, welding, grinding, welding, milling, probably, helicoiling, drilling, tapping, all of that stuff. There's shit in the bottom of that engine. And that is going to hurt. It might not hurt right now, but all that's going up the oil galleries. It's jamming up, jamming up in the top of the head. That means that you're not getting enough oil to the top. And that might be part of why it's rattling as well. Why it's rattling worse than it was when it started. But still, this has been pointed out to Ryan, and Ryan has insisted that the engine sounds fine. Now, it's true that uh, cameras can make, exacerbate certain, certain elements of an engine's noise. So what you do is you go off and you listen to other Super Dreams, and they don't sound like that at all. His sounds are very, very sick. Um... Again, yeah, he's said that he's uh, he's a beginner, but he doesn't seem to be interested in learning from anybody who's trying to tell him anything. Um, so what then? So I've yeah I've commented on his latest video saying effectively what I've just said, um, and I got told this. Now, the 
person he's referring to in there is Matt Hudson. Matt Hudson, dirty garage guy. I don't follow all his live streams. If, if, I, if I'm around for one occasionally, I will be. But uh, they don't, I don't find him terribly interesting anyway. I don't agree with everything that Matt says. Uh, there's certain aspects of what Matt says that I vehemently disagree with. He knows that. Other people know that as well. Um, I'm, I, I'm not a huge fan of some of his criticism of other, of other YouTubers, including Ryan. The technical side of things, yes, fine. Um, and a lot of the technical side of things, Matt is bang on. He's absolutely bang on the money. Um, but he does tend to search for, oh no, that's terrible, that's terrible. And in fact, it's not. It's just a bit, you know. Yeah. Oh, you haven't washed that properly because there's a speck of crud. Yeah, okay. But hey, it is what it is. It, uh, it earns, earns him his money. So I've been sacked from uh, from Ryan's channel because he knows that I watch um, watch your man Matt's channel. Good. That's somebody who's interested in learning, and that's somebody who's interested in criticism, isn't it? Now, deleting comments is actually where Matt came in. Um, it's where he really fired up. Um, when he called out Del Boy, Del Boy's garage, for deleting comments. You know, Del Boy has a, a rather active delete finger. A very active delete finger. If you put anything that isn't absolute cocksucking in his comments, then you'll get deleted. Um, and that's the way that Ryan seems to be going, because if you're going to be an influencer, you can't have people telling you that you're doing things wrong. So, Ryan, you're a fuckwit. You haven't got a fucking clue what you're doing. You have no place giving those bikes away. I know that the Super Dream isn't required to have an MOT to go on the road, but you shouldn't be giving it away without it having an MOT. You should MOT it. The motor needs to come out. It needs the bottom taken apart completely and cleaned. It needs all of the oil galleries cleaned. It needs all of the bearings inspected and replaced if necessary. And then it wants to be put together properly according to the fucking manual, you tool. There you go. That's my call on it. I've been nice before, but you're a fucking idiot. You've got no place near bikes. Go back to bodybuilding, you turd. Bye.